Hey guys, it's Paolo, and we're back. Can I just say that I've missed you guys so much? Okay, so today we have a brand new episode because I am gonna be talking with the star of my big, fat, fabulous life, the one and only Whitney Way Thor. You guys, I haven't seen her since she was a guest on our show back in September of 2015, and let me say we had so much fun. But today she's back to talk about season 11 of her hit show. So I'll see you guys with Whitney. Spoonful Apollo, here we go. Okay, tell me when you're good. Everything's okay. good? Mics? Yep. Okay. Hi, Whitney. Hi. I want to hug you. I'm like coming through the screen. <laughs> I feel like you're right here by me. Um, you know, no. the last time I saw you, it was September of 2015. You were promoting season two of your show. You know, when you said yes to doing the show, did you ever think we would be here in 2023 talking about season 11? No, I did not. And in fact, I the producer I had at that time, I remember he said to me one time, he was like, I think this show might have six seasons in it. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we are. So no, it's, it's definitely um, strange. But I will say meeting you has been, of course, I've done dozens and dozens and dozens of interviews um, all over the world. But meeting you has remained one of my absolute favorites. Oh my um, and I actually really remember it. I had so much fun with you. I remember us dancing yes. and oh um, I followed you online and, and always just really hope that you were doing well. And I'm so glad that we're able to reconnect right now. Same here. I remember that you told me back in 2015, you said the first thing you said was, Paolo, your, your eyebrows are on fleek. I always remember <laughs> that. <laughs> your eyebrows are on fleek. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay, whatever. Okay, so because we're I really am- really ourselves. Jeez, on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Yeah. You know, because I am seeing you, I, I really do want to say um, my deepest condolences to you, your father and your brother. Um, I am so sorry for the loss of your mom. Um, you know, Whitney, if you can take away all the noise and the social media and the show and you find yourself in a quiet space, um, how are you doing today? Well, you know, I think it's interesting. In the bigger picture, I'm doing much better than I ever thought that I would. I used to think that I would have to be hospitalized when my parents died and I've been dreading this day literally since I was like 10, something I think about all the time. Um, so I've been shocked at like that I'm still alive, you know, mm. I'm still living. Um, but I will say I think the last two months or so has been harder for me for some reason than all the months in between when she died and now. I'm not sure if that's typical or not, but I've just, I've just found myself, I mean, of course I think about her every day and I've just found myself getting stuck um, a little bit more, crying a little bit more, just, um, I had a big cry the other night. I went out to my car, sat in the driveway and just had a big, big, big cry, which I haven't had a whole lot of those. And I'm a crier. So um, I've also just recently started dreaming about her. Um, and I have very realistic dreams all the time with people I know in them and I had not dreamed about her. Mm. So I don't know if like maybe my brain's been like protecting me for a while, maybe from feeling so much of this. And, and now maybe I'm feeling it a little bit more, but ultimately um, I am doing fine. And every good quality that I have came from my mother and she gave me all the tools that I need to, um, to survive this. Mm. So God mm. bless her. <laughs> wow. God bless babes. Yeah. You know, um, your mom passed away December 7, 2022. My mom had passed away earlier that year, January 22nd of 2022. Your relationship with your mom reminds me a lot of my relationship with my mom, just watching your show. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for me, I was never prepared for grief. I just, it was my biggest fear, like you were saying, losing a parent, especially a mother, our moms are our everything. Um, so. <laughs> no. I know, I know, and I, I followed you and your mom and she was so wonderful. And you could tell how loved she was and how much she loved you and it was really beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Um, was it hard? Was it challenging for you? Was it weird taping season 11 and not having your mom physically there? Like, like what was that like for you? Yeah, um, I've always said that like, my mom is a star of the show and you know, I'm just a vehicle to like bring her to the public for her to shine. So, um, 
in a way, I mean, yeah, we feel really lost without her. Uh, my poor dad, you know, he <laughs> um, has always been on the show a little bit less and he's not, you know, my mom is, is like I said, she's a star. My dad is kind of clueless a lot you know he's like the one that like you're laughing but like, he doesn't know why it's funny you know or he's really funny but he doesn't know why he's like my mom knew my mom always knew yeah. my dad doesn't always know so even he was nervous um he's like well what are we gonna do you know like this show is your mother's show and she's not here and I said dad you just have some shoes to fill um and he did fill them and it's been amazing uh and I would tell him all the time like mommy is so proud of you um and and she would be and you know, about two months into filming, he looked at me and he goes, this really is a full-time job. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dad, because normally he's been, he just retired six months ago. I was like, you know, he's been working. Um, and I'm like, yeah, dad, been doing it for a long time. You don't have to tell me it's hard work. But um, it was amazing actually to kind of see him flourish as a human being. Like we joke, he's not Glenn Thor anymore. He's yeah. GT. Aww. He's been through a rebrand. Um, and it was actually just really lovely because my dad has, has lived his whole life for my mother and mm. for his family. And so, like I said, six months before she died, he retired, um, officially. And, uh, this is the first time probably in his life that he's had even time to think about himself. Wow. Uh, my dad is absolutely a selfless, amazing human being. And so it's been wonderful to be able to focus on him. Um, and he does some really amazing things this season. We created a bucket list for him. Oh God. And it's just, yeah, it's just been really amazing and wonderful to see him survive and thrive. Yeah. Don't say he's not thriving, but I, he is. He's, th he's thriving for sure. Your dad is so lucky to have you as a daughter. You know, like really just seeing you guys, your relationship on this show is just so special, so beautiful, so fun. Um, I also want to thank you, your brother, and your dad for allowing the show to have show part of your mom's service. Um, I know people have different yeah. opinions back and forth, but you were so good in answering them back on your Instagram, which are so good. Um, because I feel like we don't talk about grief and loss enough. So having <laughs> that on the show really opens a conversation. Was that um, a difficult or an easy choice to make with you and your family showing part of the service? Well, we actually, they filmed everything. Wow. Um, I, you won't, I, I haven't seen the, you know, I don't see the episodes until they air, but obviously yeah. we've only got 45 minutes or so, but they filmed everything. Um, now when my mom had her last stroke um, and was in ICU for about a month and we expected that she would die, we were not in production at the time. Um, so my executive producer had to ask, you know, do you, do you want to film it? They've got to get a crew together. They've got to send it down here. Um, and I asked my dad, I said, actually, I remember just showing him the text. We were sitting in the hospital and I just showed him the phone and immediately he said yes. And the way that he describes it is that my mother was loved very publicly and he wanted her to be more publicly. Yeah. He wanted the public at her funeral. I mean, nothing makes her happier, him happier than, than people sharing how much they love her. Yeah. I mean, he, li he lives for it. So um, that was his decision to make and he made it very easily. My brother and I supported it. He likens her to Princess Diana or the Queen of England, you know? He's like, why wouldn't she have a public service yes. if the public needs to mourn her? Yeah. And it's true. Um, and in terms of actually filming it, 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 it made it easier. And that might sound strange, but having the crew there who they really are like families, some of them have been with us for 10 seasons. Mm. Um, it just felt like support. Mm. Um, and it felt just like my friends. I mean, they're, they're literally like my friends. They're important people to me. And so that felt good. And really they just, they put a microphone on me and then, and walked away. I mean, there was no, uh, I didn't, when people say they don't notice the cameras there, that's always a lie. But the one time I almost really didn't notice that there were cameras was during my mother's funeral. I mean, I just, they were just really hands off of course. Um, and so it didn't make it any harder. It actually, the, the, it made it easier. Wow. Um, just having that extra support and, there is not uh, an ounce of me that wonders if my mother would have been upset about it either. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how people on the internet like to tell you about your own life or tell you about your own relationships or your own family members. Um, no, not, not at all concerned, not for a second that my mother did, wouldn't have wanted that. Um, and like I said, it was my father's decision. We supported it. And um, I do think that it's important to... I can't say that this was on my mind at the time necessarily, but it is important to be a mirror for people. And when my mother was, was in the last 11 months of her life and I was caretaking for her, um, 
people, so many people reached out and said, like, I go through this with my parents. I've never seen somebody go through this. This is hard. This is and even then, some people were saying, like, oh, you shouldn't put your mother on camera. Like, you know, we didn't put her on camera. She chose. Yeah. My mother had her faculties. And I've never been so proud of my mother. Mm. And she watched herself on TV. And when we saw her in her last little episode, we were watching it. And we said, that's a wrap on Babs Thor. And we clapped for her. And she was so excited. And the bravery that she had to do that, to get on camera, you know, with her cognitive difficulties and all that. She knows what's going on. Mm. I mean, she, I just thought, God, I've never been more proud of my mother. <sighs> Um, and here she is still being a star after yes. all this. So even when I saw people say like, you're exploiting your mom, it, I'm about to cuss, it yeah. kills me. Um, you can say a lot of things about me or whatever, but one thing that you cannot say about me or my family is that all of our decisions are not made out of complete love and respect for each other, yeah. period. Um, Amen. My mother, icon, and um, she lived in icon, she died in icon and like, I'm so happy to share her with people and she will live on yeah. for a very long time in people's hearts, memories, and then their inside jokes and their laughter and their joy. And, and we are so grateful that we were able to share her. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> look, look, I got to tell you, I am so grateful because I think of the cameras being there with your mom. I remember last season, season 10, when your best friend Jessica got married. It was the first time your mom went out after she had her, on camera, yeah. Yeah, her second stroke the year before. And there was that moment of her in the room and she was getting her hair done and you and Jessica walked in. It just it reminded me of those moments I had with my mom when she was sick in those 10 months. And I'm just like, thank you for you, your beautiful mother, your dad for allowing that because it's helping so many people around understanding like what you're going through you're not alone i'm going through that it just felt like we're, we have our own community you know so that was a special well, day her i mean she was so happy in the episode where we filmed the music video yeah um she had actually been in the hospital she had like a breathing issue and she'd been in the hospital for a couple mm -hmm. days i said dad bring mom over here she wants she, she wants to do this he was like i don't know and i said dad ask her and you know she said she wanted to come the joy for her to be around, she loves my crew so much. Like people don't think, you know, they just see what they see on TV. They don't think about a larger picture. The joy that she got from that and to be involved and she got her hair done and her make, she had leg warmers on. Wow. In fact, when she went to leave, you don't see this on camera, but when we had wrapped mm. and we were trying to leave that day, my ex-boyfriend Lenny, he mm. was helping her in the in the car. And as he got her in the car, she hugged him. And, and as he was pulling away, she was trying to go with him. And she said, oh, I don't want to leave, you know, like just <laughs> it gave her so much happiness that it is so hard to hear someone criticize it or to say we we, we aired the funeral for money. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> if I got more money, depending on the level of trauma, yeah. I would be very, very rich living on an island somewhere. <laughs> I make the same amount of money whether I put my mom's funeral on TV or not. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's the hardest Thing to hear and i hear a lot yeah uh, and i definitely yeah that's the hardest kind of stuff to hear for sure. i know i know you do hear a lot you know you're so inspiring because you know when, i remember when you were around like 29 years old you were working in radio you were living with your parents mm -hmm. you, you were broke you were making minimum wage and yes. it's like, but there's something in you, Whitney, that you didn't give up, that you wanted to really follow your dream and have this big, fat, fabulous life, you know? Um, what what kept you motivated in, 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 in getting there? Because you just, you know, something in you had to keep you going and going and going. Yeah, I love this story. And I'm gonna just step away one second yeah. and grab something. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I haven't told this story in a long time. Uh. Um, I'm or to get this off my, I just put it up. Okay, so I'll tell you what motivated me. Um, my wonderful mother. The necklace. I was sitting on the couch with my parents and I was crying and I was like, what am I doing? Because I had no way to move up in radio. I couldn't even afford an apartment. Like, what am I doing? I just, I had lost a hundred pounds. I just gained it all back. And my mom gave me this necklace and it just says something good is gonna happen. And I was being like a little brat and I was like, cool mom, but like when, you know? And she and my dad just told me, just just keep doing what you're doing. You know, you work hard and um, you know, something good is gonna happen. And my mom always said, sorry, I'm right in front of my makeup mirror. And I also have this little note um, that just to remind me, cause my mom always said, you never know what's right around the corner, be ready. Um, and it's never been more true than in those few months. Um, I went from, yeah, like my life literally changed overnight. 
Uh, I didn't know what was going to happen, when or how, but I just followed my my mom's advice that you don't have to know, you know, that you just be ready because you never know. And a lot of people go viral, like with videos and, you know, I could have just let this come and go and pass me by. And I remember like literally in the moments that it was happening, feeling like my world changing and my life changing and I'm going on the Today Show and I'm doing, you know, all these crazy things. And I was like, I could let this pass me by or I could make this like my life's work. And I had all these interviewers asking me about body positivity and I didn't even really know what it was. Mm. I just came to my own understanding through my own life. And I was like, do I need to read books? Do I need to figure I'm going on an interview? Do I need, and I was like, no, like I've lived this, right? Like I, I know what's uh, what I feel and what I believe in, and my life is my research. And I just took it and I was like this, the universe has handed me this opportunity and I'm gonna go with it. And here we are still going with it. Um, but it's because of this little, you know, seed that wow. my mom planted in me just I... to, just to trust, just to keep going and, and, and also to trust myself, you know, to trust, um, that I know who I am and that I had something valuable and, and, and that I feel like I have good instincts about things. And, um, yeah, I get that, uh, I get that from my mommy. So, uh. I love that you still have that necklace. I, I remember remembering that story that she gave it to you on your birthday. And I was like, I wonder if Whitney still has that necklace. And you do, you do. And that keeps you going, even in the tough days, yep. the good days, the bad days, you look at that necklace and it is a reminder. Mm -hmm. It really is. You know, um, real quickly, I know in the season of the promo, we see that your, your dad, you guys go visit his long lost daughter, your half sister, yes. Angie, okay? I know you can't talk about it, but we see that camera shot of your half sister coming down the stairs and the camera's behind her in three words okay to describe what did that moment feel like for you just three words you can give me surreal exciting mm, i'm trying to think of how to word the last feeling ah the last feeling was just this extreme happiness for for my father wow just it was something i never expected i had so much anticipation and just I don't know what the, I don't know what that word is, but just looking at my dad and thinking, wow, thank God he got this opportunity, you know, um, to kind of for this to come full circle because he didn't know about DNA websites, you know, when he fathered this child, he had no idea that he would ever get to yeah. meet her. And she came at just the right time. I'll say that for our wow. family. She came at just the right time. I can't yeah. wait to watch it Tuesday, September 5th. Um, this is what we're, how we're going to end it. We wanted to do something to, um, remember and honor your beautiful mother, Babs, okay? So what we're gonna do is, um, Patrick and I are Spoonful Apollo. There will be 100 trees planted in our nation's forest in memory of the beloved Barbara Babs Thor for your, for your beautiful mother. Thank you. Thank you, that is so wonderful. Yeah. That is so wonderful. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Ugh. For you, My um, you really are a beacon of light. You're a beacon of light. And to see how you've grown since you were in our home in LA, like that day, and to see you all these seasons later and how you really, this platform, I know you have one of your favorite uh, uh, quotes that you love by Audre Lorde is, I am deliberate and afraid of nothing. I know you stand by that. Um, you just inspire me. You inspire me to remind me that I'm gonna be okay. And anyone who's grieving a loved one, you're gonna be okay. Just keep moving forward. You're gonna be okay. Yeah. So I want to say thank yeah. you to you. Thank you. You inspire me too. Thank you. Thank you. Really <laughs> thank and you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we we finally got to talk again all these years later, face kind of face to face. I know it feels so good. I can't wait to see you Tuesday, September 5th on TLC, everyone. Whitney, I love you. I love you, your family, and everyone around you. You're just an amazing, beautiful, bright, gorgeous woman, okay? I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you too. Okay. Thank you, Paolo. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, Patrick. <laughs> Say bye. 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 <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. bye.